welcome to Boone, North Carolina at Elevation, where the air is thin and they wait outside the doors hours before this game at Holmes Convocation Center. It is a first place battle. App State welcoming in James Madison for the right to be at the top of the Sun Belt standings, a place that App State has not lost all year because of this raucous drought. James Madison is looking to continue that here today. Edwards Jr. for James Madison, Justin Abson, a great rim protector for App State. And App State second in the country, excuse me, leading the country in block shots per game, and Justin Abson is the anchor of that defense. But on the other end, Terrence Edwards lives by attacking the rim. We'll go in there with no fear whatsoever today, so something's got to give, but should be a great physical matchup at the rim all day in this one. He should be physical, should be very, very loud. Showed you the students waiting outside to get in for a while. You had the call of the Auburn game. Students rushed the court here, and they might be as anticipatory for this tip as they were for that game here in Boone, North Carolina. Yeah, if, uh, if, if the Mountaineers are able to sneak out another one here today, I wouldn't be surprised to see those students on the floor right after the horns out at the end of 40 minutes. James Madison as many wins entering Saturday today as anybody in the country. Grand Canyon and Purdue both have matched them with 18 wins. And James Madison tied for the first nationally with those 18 wins. Now trying to get in first place against 7-1 App State. And Bill Jacobson approaches the center jump circle. And off we go with Abson winning the tip. And App State in front of a raucous home crowd touches for the first time. Xavion Brown runs the show at point guard. Really good ball handler Donovan Gregory also out there with him. Harkin steps back and the deep jumper goes for three. So James Madison with this starting look. That's Xavier Brown at point guard for the third straight game. It was Michael Green starting at point guard the last time they played App State. Three games in a row that Brown starts around the other four. App State, one of the best ball screen defensive teams in the country. Will switch up their coverages quite a bit. Getting in there is going to be where it's tough. That great shot back right there by Bickerstaff getting Justin Abson off his feet. A terrific finish. You see right away James Madison making it a point. Let's go inside and show that we can score around that rim. In the first matchup, Abson blocked a couple of shots early. Looked like there was an intimidation factor there. As Bickerstaff had the score, now the tie-up. And that's a jump ball going with the Dukes. That's going to be something to keep an eye on in this game is the turnovers. App State was able to overcome 23 turnovers on the road. Let's go get that within a couple weeks ago. And you see right there, James Madison applied a little pressure to that first turnover in the game. So you got your eyes on the backboards and on the turnovers. It was plus 10 for James Madison in turnovers the first time. Plus 12 for App State in rebounding. Four-point win for App State earlier this year. Edwards into the paint and a strong take for two. You know, he's always so under control. He's got great size, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, really strong. But when he gets in there, he's always under control. He's never going to run over anybody. He's able to use his size to score. You saw right there, the patience, able to lay that one in. It never feels like Edwards' drive is totally stopped. Hands in for Wooden, and he has the takeaway for James Madison. And Wooden using that strong left hand to pack it down. Well, talking to Mark Byington today at shoot around, he knew, he said, look, our guys are used to playing in this kind of environment. Hey, we've got transfers that play in the ACC, guys that play in the NCAA tournament. We're, this is nothing to us, and we've had a bullseye on our back all season. And you see right out of the gate, just doing what they do, showing no nerves whatsoever in a very hostile environment. James Madison has four players that have played over 100 college games. And another turnover. Abson gives it away. Edwards leading the break and cradling it. Fans wanted to travel. And Edwards keeps it. Well, anytime you take the ball in the lane today, you better be strong with it. Because there's going to be two or three guys trying to slap down at that basketball. Both teams already being physical at the defensive end. Friedel lines up, misses, and tapped in the hands of Abson. Harkin was out here with an assistant coach 
probably got up 500 shots. I'm not kidding. I watched the entire thing, and you see the carryover already. Two made threes early in this game, and if he's hot from behind the three, this NC team is going to be tough to beat. It sounds tiring. <laughs> For me and you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Wood and heavy on the three. Offensive rebound. Bickerstaff blocked by Absent. Yeah, that looked close to a goaltending, but officials let it play out. But you see Absent making his presence known already. And Gregory inside followed his own. And there's Absent on the offensive glass. And both these teams crash hard in the offensive glass. Here was Wooden packing it down. Yeah, after the turnover on the other end, just getting down the lane for the easy two-handed hammer. And you see Terrence Harkin coming out, feeling it, knocked down the three's first possession. That one looked really good, leaving his hands. That was a look at two of the hottest guys in both lineups. Harkin coming off a season high in their win on Thursday. The Wooden scored 23 against Old Dominion in the win for James Madison. And neither of these teams are great three-point shooting team. They do have guys that can't make shots. But for Harkin, in App State, if he's able to kind of catch fire behind the three-point line, that's a huge bonus. And he's short from the mid-range. Bickerstaff has the rebound. Now, Bicker's staff early in the season, it was expected pretty much every game. He's going to be in double-double territory. <coughs> Brown, three down to Absent. And James Madison, they will play quick. I mean, both these teams play up-tempo. I know that first matchup was a low-scoring game. But both these teams average in the 70s, so not going to be a slow walk-up type of game here today. There's Brown turning the corner. mentioned the offensive rebounding. Some of that was not a lot of shots were going down the first time they played. Yeah, it's easy to be a good offensive rebounding team when you shoot a good percentage in the game, but you know, both these teams are terrific on the backboard. App State, you mentioned it, 12, advantage by 12 in that first game. Big reason why they were able to overcome those 23 turnovers as we see a turnover right there from the Dukes. Uh, Bickerstaff gamble. A little numbers advantage with James Madison scrambling. Uh, Harkum, no. And an offensive rebound. There's Trayvon Spillers. He's the most active rebounder for App State in eight and a half a game. Brown lobs it up. Couldn't finish. He was looking for Spillers at the top. Here's Edwards slicing it. He's blocked by Absen. Absolutely deleted that shot. Gregory bangs his way into goals. Like I said, we're not going to see a walk the ball at the court target game here today. The action to here already is crazy. Mark Bikin says, guys, let's slow down here, try to catch our breath a little bit. But you see the length of Jumps and Absent at the rim on that lack of possession with a great block. A couple of blocks already for Absent, the top shot blocker in the Sun Belt. And Edwards reverses it, and Absent says, no shot. That's advertised just to Absent. Hurt feelings early and boom. concentration of his team today and the walkthrough going over everything. Uh, hasn't been broken since he's taken over his Tate onto the floor for the first time for App State with a score. Yeah, that's exactly what Miles Tate does. He comes in and gives them instant offense off the bench. He's really embraced kind of that six-man type role you see right there being aggressive on the first catch. And then Friedel go to the free throw line trying to stop this 7-0 run. Make a 9-0 run for App State. C.J. Huntley called for the first foul in this game either way. Like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Certainly not broken on either sideline. Mark Byington and Dustin Kearns, the two head coaches, have done nothing but have winning seasons since they've taken the job, sir. When people think of App State and James Madison, the first thing they think of is football, right? Rightfully so. Their football program has been terrific, but... What these two guys have done with these respective programs has been incredible. Dustin Curtin's going to the NCAA tournament just his second year. Mark Byington, you mentioned it, 18 wins, tied for the most in the country, picked first preseason Sun Belt. I mean, the, the job these two guys have done to build these programs and to elevate this rivalry even more. There's no love lost on the football field, but there is no love lost on the basketball court between these two programs either. Uh, Friedel called for that first foul for James Madison. It's it's really a, a quickly budding rivalry. 
Of course, App State's been in the Sun Belt a little bit now. James Madison coming in last year after their good run in the CAA when Mark Byington took them to the CAA championship in 2021. But it's happened fast. Spillers in tight, short rebound taken away. Jalen Carey. Yeah, and App State worked hard on that today. That side pick and roll with a little pocket pass. They know James Madison's going to be aggressive at times on the ball screens. Great pass. Trayvon Spillers just not able to finish. And Green now as the backup point guard will get a second chance after his miss. Friedel catching fire. And 0 for 2 start for Friedel from deep. And, and, and to me, that's the one guy that really is going to have to make a couple shots from behind the arc today for James Madison. He's a great three-point shooter, and he's gotten two pretty good looks already in this game. He's unable to knock it down. James Madison 0 for their last 10 from the floor, and C.J. Huntley going to the free throw line. Jalen Carey got him from behind. Jalen Carey, very skilled sub off the bench for James Madison, but got a little aggressive that time, tried to shoot the gap for the steal. I'll leave the set foot on the floor. We're going to do it myself. This is free to mind. So two at the line for C.J. Huntley, who gives him eight points, five rebounds off the bench. Perfect on his first. Hey, more college basketball coming up tonight. SEC, it's Alabama against LSU at Coleman Coliseum. Also available on the ESPN app. If you're uh, watching digitally right now, which everybody is, because Baylor is in overtime once that game ends. If you're going out, shopping, dinner, you can watch us at the restaurant, too. We joined on ESPN, too, once that game is over. Second to the line for C.J. Huntley, and he got one and two. So Green is... The former starting point guard, he's going through a shooting slump right now, but a very good facilitator. Trying to spark him off the bench, turned over. With hands on for App State, it's Miles Tate into the front court. Oh, and that defense swarming. Green came from behind, and Absent had it tapped. And Edwards has to get back into play. A three for Mantis! Mark Byington is going crazy over there. He wanted a double dribble, and I'm not sure he wasn't right. It certainly looked like Justin Absent took a dribble before he picked it up and then put it on the floor again. But nonetheless, the officials play on. Oh, shot influence. C.J. Huntley in the face of Green, and the layup wouldn't sit. And that's the thing about going against App State. There are times, obviously, where Absent, who we've seen have a couple blocks already early, but just the presence can get the mind of the opposing team. See, Mantis, a little bit of a heat check there. But, you know, when you go against a team that is so good at blocking shots, you get in there and sometimes you almost you feel like they're there when they're not. Now, James Madison has done a good job a couple times early in a couple of shot fakes, but it's just so hard to go in there with a free mind knowing that at any time one of those guys could come out of nowhere and get a piece of your shot. Well, that might help for James Madison clearing up some of those cobwebs or getting that with a shot blocker. C.J. Huntley just picked up his second foul. One of the three guys that can go beat a shot for the Mountaineers. So Apps and Spillers in there protecting the rim. But there's still that guy, and he swallows it up again, Absent. Yeah, Rick Juan Horton tried to get him on the shot fake, but Justin Absent did a good job of staying on his feet, just went straight up with it. There's Tate, his shot influenced, and well defended by Carey, getting back into the play. It is a 13-1 App State run, no field goals for James Madison in over five minutes. Green couldn't shake Tate. Down to 10 on the shot clock. It's Wooden. Long field goal drought against one of the elite defenses in the country, App State. Three to go. Down to two. Edwards, deep two. And it goes. That was 29 and a half perfect seconds of defense for App State. You know what? Sometimes individual offense is just better. Just a great one-on-one -on -one shot there at the end of the clock shot for Terrence Edwards in a much-needed basket for the Dukes. And it snaps the... Five minute scoring drought. There's Spillers way short on that. Edwards pops it free. Didn't touch the rim, so no shot clock reset. Yeah, and I'm not sure about State's season. Not only six seconds left now. And that pass intercepted. Carey with hands on again. See, Carey with real active hands early. Block the steal. 
Well, and that's where James Madison makes up for their lack of shot blocking is they're really active with their hands, average over nine steals per game. Uh, into the shot blocking, and Carey scores it. Yeah, Jalen Carey is one of the guys for this James Madison team that has the size to be able to go inside and score over just an absolute shot right there. Is a top 10 defense nationally for App State because of the rim protection. Well, there's a reason why they're number one in the country already with five blocks here today. It is a block party so far here in Booth. Struggling to sleep through the night due to frequent urination? You're not alone. For many men, an enlarged prostate is a waking nightmare. Now they're on ESPN Plus. Like shooting team, but so far here in this first half, able to knock down a couple. See the good ball movement here. Terrence Harker just left alone just for a split second, able to knock it down. A little transition basketball way behind the line on that one, making it look easy. Nothing but net. And Chris Mays is coming off the bench. Everybody knows what he's going to do. He is a great three point shooter. You give him an inch of daylight, it is going to go down more times than not. But James Madison, in the first time they played App State, took him until almost 12 minutes into that second half to make a three. They haven't made one yet today, and it's something you had your eye on and softening up some of that shot blocking for App State. And they've had a couple good looks. Noah Friedel had a couple good ones from the left corner, just unable to knock him down. But you know, James Madison is a team that will shoot threes when open. They have guys that are capable of it, but just haven't got a lot of clean looks so far in this game. You know, Jordan Marsh is... Throws it out of bounds. It's off of James Madison and Green. He'll keep it. But yeah, it was a couple of threes that late in that second half, middle of that second half, that got James Madison even. They were down by 16 in the first half against App State at home. La Brown! Well, that was a big time read on the underneath out of bounds play there by Xavion Brown. App State goes to their 1-3-1 here, trying to mix it up a little bit defensively, but just a great back cut to the rim. And Don McGregory, the perfect pass. And Friedel with the first three for the Dukes. And that may get him going here. We'll have to keep an eye on that. You know, if you're Dustin Kearns, you mentioned Nate Shooter. He's going to switch up the defenses, even if they're playing well in one of them, which they've been playing really well in man to man. But just try to get James Madison out of the rhythm a little bit. But number one in black is one guy you cannot afford to leave open. A really good guy to shoot you out of a zone. Seeing his zone the other way for James Madison with App State. Here's Marsh down the baseline, and he's fouled. Just great execution there. Terrence Edwards got caught ball watching just for a split second, but just a great back cut by Xavion Brown, a great pass by Donovan Gregory. And if you just throw it up anywhere near the rim, Brown's going to go up and get it every time. Uh, it kind of looked like it, it jolted your body a little bit. You, you know, like, whoa, it reminded me of myself back in the day. I'm oh, sure. Well, <laughs> oh, you were on your tiptoes at 6'11". No, I should have I said first, I was the guy making the pass, not the one who 6'3 with ups like that. that. That didn't look like the tape I've seen of you. <laughs> Synergy doesn't quite remember it the same. No, because it never happened. That's why. Well, Green picked up that foul, the James Madison point guard here. And that was his second, so it looks like Xavier Brown will go to the scores table check-in at the next dead ball. Rydell just hit that first three. Can't break free of Brown. It's been a one of five outside shooting start for the Dukes. But Edwards got his defender on his hip. He did, he did a great job. App State was in what they call their drop coverage right there, where Justin Abson, the guy who was guarding the screener, kind of sat in the middle of the lane. But Terrence Edwards did a great job of getting his man on his back side. He was able to finish with a little floater. Just a smart play there by Terrence Edwards. Edwards, in the first game against App State, went for 19 points. Did take him 21 shots. Looking for a more efficient day in round two. Marsh, step back. Would have been a three. And tapped into the hands of Bickerstaff. James Madison went super cold. Now they're super hot. 
And Bickerstaff going to the free throw. Never mind. He traveled. And yeah, I think he shuffled those feet just a little bit before the contact. But going back, back to that ball screen, you see here, Donovan Gregory, good screen there by T.J. Bickerstaff. But Justin Absent was just low enough. Terrence Edwards did a great job of getting Donovan Gregory behind him and then had just enough daylight to be able to knock that down. Just a smart play. But again, you see... He's always under control coming up that ball screen and just reads the coverage perfectly. And Edwards is so good getting to that 10 to 12 foot range and, and getting into that floater. And he's got the size to be able to shoot over guys. That's why it's so effective. He's the top scorer for Mark Byington's James Madison team. They've made four shots in a row. Back within two. that question again when we go on Lydia, which is coming up. We'll be joined on ESPN News shortly. Well, welcome to Boone, North Carolina, and welcome to the game, Terrence Harkham, who just hit a three for App State. Tom Runyon, David Padgett, there's a battle for first place in the Sun Belt. App State in first place alone at the start of this Saturday. Well, James Madison, a game back in a three-way tie for second place. Terrence Edwards, Jr., the leading scorer for the Dukes, in and out on his jump shot. And a good contest there by Justin Abson. And a great catch and pass on the other end. Gotta love seeing that. Reward the big fella for running the floor. And Justin Abson has been the difference maker here so far. Mostly on the defensive end, but that time getting out running for the easy finish. He's got fleet feet, doesn't he? Sure does. Uh, Abson had the run out. James Madison hits him back with Bickerstaff. The top rebounder for James Madison. Also, second leading scorer at 14 points a game. TJ Bickerstaff. Got four players in this game that you could argue. That's a three for Gregory. That could be the conference player of the year. We just saw two of them on back to back trips. And no question. And. Donovan Gregory, not really known as a three-point shooter, only five makes on the season coming into this game. But you know it's amazing when, you, when your team's playing confident and loose, it can be contagious. Gregory looked really confident on that one. And Bickerstaff definitely took steps. We talked about the shot blocking of Justin Absent this time. A great rebound by Xavion Brown and Justin Absent getting out to beat everybody down the floor. A great pass. A great catch and finish. Gotta love seeing that reward the big fellow for running the floor. Look at that line. Those are the first two points. Is he gonna go rebound, block, double, double? He could. You know, he doesn't score a lot, but he doesn't need to, and he's not too worried about that. You know, it was interesting talking to Dustin Kurtz today. The reason he loves his team so much, other than the fact that they're really good, is they're really unselfish. Nobody cares who gets the credit. I mean, CJ Huntley was all-conference caliber player last year and he's the sixth man coming off the bench this year he's totally fine with him and these guys just want to win and you just got to love that if you're Dustin Kearns he knows how lucky he is to be coaching this team well, Brown going to the free throw line for James Madison have you ever been on a, a selfish team that was good do those exist they don't exist very often I'll say that you know not now you'll have guys every once in a while that they're more worried about scoring than others but if you have a whole team full of guys like that very, very rarely do you see teams like that being, can sustain being successful for a long period of time. Well, tonight, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, over on ESPN and the app. Our X game coverage continues from Aspen. We'll have men's snowboard big air and men's ski knuckle huck. Right down David Padgett's avenue of expertise. You know, six foot eleven. I grew up in the Reno, Nevada area, big ski area. I've never heard of that sport. I'm like, I feel like I'm pretty familiar with winter sports, but I've never heard of that. Let's go check that out. Knuckle huck. Can't say I know what that is. Do you? I'll find out tonight. Uh, I, I just read the copy that was in front of me. It, it, it didn't have the explanation of what knuckle huck was. Arkham. 
he hit another triple. He's coming off a, a season best game, 23 points on Thursday. And James Madison playing from behind most of this first half. In the carry in the post, he's double. He was dug out for a second by Gregory, but he got it back. And Randleman on the take, and that's swatted by Spillers. We saw, as much as we've talked about Justin Abson, they are a three-headed monster when it comes to blocking shots. You see Trayvon Spillers, who led junior college last year to block shots, getting way above the rim for that one. You see, they just, they, they have such great timing. You think you're open, you think you're open, they wait for you to leave the floor. They wait for you to release it, and again, blocked it off the backboard, kept it in play, allowed that to start their fast break going down the other way. And they brought their best for a national TV audience. Making us look smart over here like we know what we're talking about, right? Well, they're also hoping they save some for after the Baylor game is over. So we joined on E2. Seven blocks in this first half, and the lead is seven for App State. They're trying to stay undefeated on their home floor. The only Sun Belt team that has not lost at home this year. They're 9 0. Good hands from Edwards, but out for a three. And take back to. Even though App State has not shot a great percentage on the season for free, Dustin Kearns is completely fine with their guys shooting them as long as they're great shots with that one was right there. Uh, Edwards is right on the doorstep, and the help came from Spillers. And the Mountaineers away with it. Harkin, high off the window, Spillers tap back. But uh, that'll be in the cylinder. Bill Jacobson comes in and says, wave that off. In real time, and we had a great angle at that. It looked like it was a good tip. Yeah, it looked like that ball was still inside the cylinder, so good call there by the officials. It looked in real time like it was outside, but I think Dustin Kearns has a chance to see that after the game. He'll realize that was a good call. Little Bill Jacobson all over it on that far sideline. Uh, Wooden with the turnaround, and that drops. Yeah, good shot there by the Julia Wooden. Tried to Muscle CJ Huntley there a little bit, unable to do so. Nice little touch there on that 15 foot turnaround. Just ahead of the under four timeout. And Bickerstaff getting ready to come in at the break for James Madison. Second chance for App State. Here's Spillers on carry. Trayvon Spillers leads this App State team in scoring, but they don't have to run anything for him. He simply just plays so hard. He is such a simple basketball player. He catches it, it's one-on-one, -on -one. he's going to put it on the floor and get to the rim. He's so athletic, you see right there, no indecision. Just went to the rim and scored. Oh, nice spin for Edwards. That is a nice. big answer there on the other end. And Mark Byington's going to get a timeout here, try to settle them defensively. Uh, the leading scorer, Edwards, coming back in. When we come back, trying to solve this shot blocking for App State. And scoring around the rim, not easy against the Mountaineers, and today has been no different so far. North Carolina, David Padgett, Connor Onion, Dustin Kearns has one of the best defense in the country on that App State sideline. You were talking about the fact that they remind you a little bit of a team that went to the Final Four last year and how they play. Yeah, San Diego State is who jumped out at me right away. Just the way they play, great protecting the rim, great defensively. Not, a, not a, an elite offensive team, a good one. Score in a variety of ways, but just suffocating on the other end. I mean, terrific ball screen defense, great shot blocking, great rebounding team. Just make it really, really difficult for you to beat them by you know by simply coming in here and putting up 70 points. That's just not going to happen. And teams that play that well defensively, there's no saying defense travels. And when you play defense like they do, there's a reason why they're as good as they are. But James Madison, since conference play started, they have the most efficient defense in the conference, according to Ken Palm. So this is number one versus number two as far as defense. Mark Byington can really coach that end of the floor. He can, and you know, going back to that first matchup, they forced 23 turnovers from the App State Mountaineers. Now, App State obviously able to hang on in that game, but averaging nine steals a game, which is top 25 in the country, so a terrific defensive team in their own right. Oh, Tate had the setup for Spillers, who is fouled. 
that's about the second or third time in this game where we've seen a back cut out of the corner, whether on dribble penetration, when the ball has gotten to that free throw line, logo area in the middle of the lane, somebody in the corner is cutting back door and not standing. We saw the dunk on the underneath that bounce play, and then that time Trayvon Spiller's cutting, trying to take the tear the rim down right there, get fouled and go to the free throw line. Well, that's twice now that Spillers might wish he could have a dunk back. Almost finished it. And by the way, App State's going to be shooting the bonus the rest of this half. That's the other thing about App State's defense. Look at that foul count right now. They blocked seven shots, and they are nowhere close to putting James Madison at the line for the bonus. Which is incredible because it's not like James Madison is coming down and shooting a bunch of threes. I mean, they're trying to attack the rim, but the shot blockers from App State are just so good at showing their hands. You see, every time the ball comes near Justin Abson on there, his hands are up, showing his hands, never breaks his plane. Well, Abson's down there as Bickerstaff bangs in, and that helps. Yeah, got him in the body. A, that was a big time body move right there by TJ Bickerstaff. And he's, we mentioned it earlier, he's the one guy. It can kind of get in there and do some damage just because of his strength. We see James Madison doing what they do, creating a steal. Right, good hands for Brown, and a foul goes on Absent. So that's the first on Absent. But that's another way you can try to negate him a little bit, get him in foul trouble. Yeah, and James Madison's not a great shot blocking team, but they use their quickness to their advantage. Every time you put the ball on the floor, or you catch it in the high post, or you catch it in the low post, they're going to try to slap down at the ball. They do it every single time. Now, will they have some fouls called on them at times? Yes, but they're not going to have all, every, the officials are not going to call all of them. And they're so active, as we see App State here switching up, going a little two-three zones, so they will do from time to time. And James Madison trying to get the ball into the middle of the zone there, the weak spot, there it is right there to Terrence Edwards. And they got to Bickerstaff, nice feed from Edwards. Yeah, and I know Dustin Kearns, is, he will switch it up defensively, try to throw off the rhythm, but I think his man-to-man -man has been so good so far in this game. I mean, if I were him, I would probably consider just staying with it. I mean, it has been so good, and they've already been scored on twice against zone. And James Madison has scored on back-to-back -back trips. And Bickerstaff didn't put it up against Absent. Edwards does, and that's short. Influenced by Absent down there again. Arkham, a deadly three-point shooter, on the take, and that's a block. Xavier, Xavier Brown tried to get in there and take a charge, couldn't quite tell if his feet were in the restricted area, or if he just hadn't gotten set yet, but they're going back to that last possession. Terrence Edwards made a great move to get in the lane. Justin Absent didn't block it, but he was there to kind of alter it. But I love the approach of James Madison so far. They're going in there unafraid. I mean, they say, you know what? Yes, they're a great shot blocking team. But that doesn't mean that we got to stop attacking the rim. We still have to do what we do and try to get in the lane and score. And they're doing a decent job of, of attacking that rim so far. And, you know, as well as App State's been defensively, it's only a six-point game. And this is a guy coming off the bench, Friedel, who can change that calculus a little bit. Yeah, because you've got to account for where he is on the floor. He can't help off quite as much because if he gets an inch of daylight, it is going up and it's probably going in, and they look for him every time down. The tape goes out. Brown comes back in for App State defensively. Seen two different zone looks from App State. We've seen the 1 3 1, I've seen the 2 3. Back into the man right here on this trip. And Friedel turning the corner, and Absent reaches out and spears it. I know Noah Friedel is trying to do the right thing but getting in the lane, but he's just not going to be able to finish right there. He almost needs to just keep his dribble alive, dribble it back out, and try to reverse it and get it to somebody else. Five blocks for Absent. That's a gaudy first half by his standards. Mantis can't book the three, and Absent is over the back, and that's his second foul. In the drop coverage on the ball screen, and he just waits for you to release it. He just has such good hands in there, and it, it, this is going to be really underappreciated by a lot of people. But the fact that he's kept every block alive, yeah, you know, the late great Bill Russell was as good as there ever was at that, keeping the ball alive on his block shots to let it trigger their fast break. And Justin Abson, obviously, I'm not comparing him to Bill Russell by any stretch. I think love how he keeps it alive because. If you block it out of bounds, the other team keeps possession. So what good does that do? 
If you block it, keep it alive, now you can go down the other way. I think you just promised an NBA championship ring for every finger for Justin Apps. Was it 11 of them? Is that what happened? Yeah. was? All right, well, I won't hold him to it. How about that? Plus, yeah, you know what I was getting at. But uh, Apps and two fouls, Spiller two fouls, I'm sorry, uh, Hutley two fouls. Edwards misses the first, so two of the three shot blockers that James Madison has gone right into this entire first half on the bench in foul trouble. And that's collateral damage sometimes of being a great shot blocking team, because that's going to happen. But give credit to James Madison. Like I said, they have not settled for perimeter jump shots. They have continued to pound the ball inside and attack that rim. And Edwards goes one of two. This James Madison defense is locked down, well, until... Randleman was called for his second, sending James Madison to the line for the bonus with Brown. Oh, that was several trips in a row without allowing a field goal. Almost three minutes. And James Madison's defense is not allowed the shot to go down. This will be the last one and one for App State in this half. On the ninth team foul for James Madison. And they'll get it back. Another empty trip for App State. And I'm not quite sure, but Ryan Randleman may have fouled Savion Brown on purpose right there. He's only a 41% free throw shooter. Maybe a little bit of a hack -a shack approach right there that time, and it worked out for him. And a one and done for the Dukes. Now a three-second difference game in shot clock. And App State does have a timeout, and they will use it. You don't get to keep that one if you're Dustin Kearns. He's not taking it with him to the locker room. Closer for App State in the first round matchup against JMU on the road. At six of the final eight points for App State. Fumbles it and falling away behind the backboard. No, Gregory cleans it up. Now James Madison has to go quick. Down to two. Brown at the horn. And it almost went.